On today's Apple Daily, Apple moving to mini LED displays and OLED displays, both in iPad Pro. M1, 8GB or 16GB, what do you need? It's been tested side by side. And is there hope for eGPUs on Apple Silicon? Plus Notification Squad. For the latest Apple news, rumors and leaks, every weekday at 12 UTC, join us in the iCave. Thanks Siri, and if you want all the stuff Siri's just mentioned, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and let me know in the comments that you did so you can join that notification squad with a shout out in the next video. Apple moving to mini LED displays and OLED displays? So we've been expecting for quite some time that Apple in uh, 2021 will be moving over to mini LED display technology in their iPad Pro line, and we're expecting that to come from March next year. However, a new report mentions that OLED displays are also in the pipeline and looking at a second half of 2021 release. Now either someone's completely got their wires crossed here or maybe Apple are looking at using OLED in one iPad Pro, maybe the 11 inch and the other one, the 12.9, getting the mini LED displays. Maybe the yields are still quite low and they're having to kind of hedge their bets. But it seems really weird that they would transition one without the other. I personally think the the Pro line should probably just be the 12.9, leave the 11 inch size to the iPad Airs, and then the regular iPads and iPad minis taking up the bottom spots using the traditional LCD displays. It just seems strange that Apple, having developed this mini LED display technology, would then use uh, OLED, which ha certainly has some downsides, and they've already struggled to get 120 hertz ProMotion working on OLED. Should you get 8 or 16 gigabytes of unified memory in your M1 MacBook? So when the MacBooks were announced with a limit of 16 gigabytes of unified memory, a lot of people were surprised and said this isn't a Pro machine and all the other stuff. However, Max Tech has done some side-by-side -side comparisons using the MacBook Pros with both 8 and 16 gigabytes of RAM to see what difference it actually makes. Now their first few tests made almost zero difference whatsoever and those were for Cinebench and Geekbench. Likewise in the Lightroom Classic uh, export, which is again very memory intensive, there's only a 17 second difference between the 8 gigabyte and 16 gigabyte versions uh, coming in at 3 minutes and 2 minutes 43 respectively. Both of those pretty much in line with the 16 gigabyte 2020 iMac with uh, Intel coming in right in between them at 2 minutes and 50 seconds. However, exporting 8K R3D RAW to 4K export, the 32 gigabyte i9, however, a 32 gigabyte MacBook Pro with a 5500M uh, processor and an i9 chip did manage to do it a slightly quicker because it has that graphics horsepower. But this is the one place where the 8GB model really struggled with 30 minutes 57 versus 5.59 on the M1 with 16GB and 5.30 on the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Again with Xcode 136 versus 122 seconds for the two encoding tests using M1. Unless you're going to be doing a lot of 8K rendering, the 16GB model is not going to make a huge difference right now, but it will certainly future proof your Mac for going forward. And finally, eGPUs on Apple Silicon, is there hope? So this comes from a report on uh, Apple Insider where Mac Forever has been testing alongside Apple Insider the Razer Core X, Sonnet eGFX, Breakaway Box and the Blackmagic eGPU. With the Blackmagic eGPU connected through a Thunderbolt 3 port, the Pro Display XDR was detected and played video normally on the M1 Mac. However, with the other eGPUs, although the cards were detected in Mac OS, they weren't functional and no video could be played. It also seems that the Blackmagic wasn't accelerating the uh, function of the display at this point. It does give hope that at least these eGPUs can be detected by the systems and it may well be something that's coming in a future software update or even firmware. So while they're not working right now, at least we're not gonna have to lose hope that they won't work in future. And notification squad, now don't worry guys, I've not forgotten we're giving away all the stuff from ESR. I have had a crazy couple of days, so I haven't had a chance yet. Woo! Knock stuff over. So I haven't had a chance yet to compile the list of everyone in the notification squad, so I'm going to extend it up until Friday this week. Should actually have some time as of tomorrow. Um, but I've actually got some... Uh, some other projects that have come in that have to take priority, I'm afraid. But we have a couple of new members in the notification squad. Chris Pecon and Organic Apple good name. So you guys, thank you so much for joining the notification squad. If anyone else wants to join and get in on that ESR giveaway, I'm also going to do a roundup video of all of the ESR stuff that they sent me just so that they've got, you know, their value out of sending us some stuff. 
then uh, please make sure you join that notification squad, uh, hit the subscribe bell, and make sure you let me know in the comments so that I actually know you're in there. Other than that, thank you for watching today, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.